and welcome to the channel. It's been a little while since I posted a video, excuse that, but I'm back with a wonderful collaboration with Hey Gears. The challenge? Make a ball jointed doll completely from a 3D printer. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and leave a comment down below. I love reading all your comments. With that all being said, let's get into the video. Hey Gears was so kind to reach out and send me some of their products for my work. I was sent their Ultracraft Reflex 3D resin printer, their wash machine, their cure machine, as well as a variety of resins, including their CMYK set, made specifically for toys, minis, and dolls. The CMYK range allows you to mix any color you need while maintaining the consistency and stability of the resin itself. The Reflex is an enclosed system that's designed to be a one-stop production platform for commercial grade final products, which includes the pre-processing software with smart AI algorithms and automated features. The Reflex also comes with an automated zeroing and leveling, meaning it can level itself, a resin level detection and automated resin refill, as well as their dual UV wavelength final curing system, which gives precise and even curing across the entire build height. These features decrease your contact with resin, as well as the chances of a failed print. For this video, I'm going to print a model head I haven't printed or painted yet, this model doesn't have a name, um, so let me know in the comments below if you have any name ideas. To accompany the head, I'm going to pair it with my ball jointed doll body that I've been working on for years now. Ugh. When you start a project, you select the preset and the resins, and the AI algorithm works to analyze the model, scan for any defects, and make any necessary repairs as well as provide automated orienting, layout, and generates the supports to ensure the success of your print. Once I'm happy with the layout and the supports, I can slice the file and send the print over my Wi-Fi to the printer, and we can start. This doll has 29 pieces to it, so I printed it over three sessions. Once one of the prints is done, I'll pop it in the wash machine to clean off any additional resin. The wash machine comes with two containers as well as the machine itself. To clean the model, I'll just be adding it to the container with some methylated spirits. Close the lid and start the wash cycle. I ran out of room in my office, so uh, welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Typically, I clean my models for three to five minutes. Once the wash cycle is finished, I just grab that container and put it on top of the empty container. Then I'll grab the dial and move it to the on position and the methylated spirits will pour into the container below. So when I grab the model, I don't have to touch any methylated spirits. After cleaning, I have to cure the models to make sure that the resin is completely set. The rotating cure plate actually is so big that I can fit basically all the models into the cure machine at once, which is awesome. You can see the camera. <laughs> the machine uses their True UV light system, which auto matches to the specific resin used. It also comes with two curing methods. The first is Cure, which cures the resin model using UV light. The second is bake, which pairs the UV light curing with inner cavity heating, leading to a stronger model for more mechanical properties. To cure my models, I'll place them in the machine and set the timer to 10 minutes on cure. To try the other resins that I was sent to see their differences, I printed out two additional heads in the different resins. Head 1 was created using PAT10 in transparent. Its main feature is the insane transparency and the resistance to discolouring. Something I personally hate when I'm printing in transparent is how quickly it can discolour. It'll look amazing when it's coming off the build plate, but after cleaning and curing... Does somebody wee in my resin? Why is it yellow? <laughs> So you can imagine how obsessed I was to see this transparency. It looks like it's made of glass or something, it's amazing. I'm probably going to keep that one for a special occasion. Head 1 was created using the PAU10 in the colour grey. 
Head 2 was created using their CMYK set, mixing this custom lavender colour. I mixed this head using their white resin and only a few drops of their cyan and magenta. The resins are crazy pigmented and mixed together really well so I didn't have to worry about streaks or pigment patches. This resin is really strong and offers long term structural stability, but still offers accuracy on smaller, more detailed parts of the model. I printed this head using their recommended presets in the slicing software. While printing the grey head, I didn't. The skin on the lavender is so smooth and so perfect, I haven't sanded this at all, it's just come off the printer. In contrast, the grey head has these print lines that need to be sanded away and buffed. When working on my models in the past, it can take me hours to get the skin so smooth, so for it to come out like this off the printer is just insane. I made sure to use the lavender presets when I was printing the body. All that is left is these little bumps in the skin from the supports. All I have to do is just buff these away. As I said, I've been working on this doll body for years now. So much work has gone into it and I've had a ridiculous amount of failures. The fact that using this software and the printer, printing this body, and it's working, and it's ready, it's just so exciting and such a confidence boost as an independent toy designer. It's just nice having your designs come to life and they're actually working and not breaking all the time. I don't know, I'm just feeling, feeling the feels. <laughs> Hopefully this means that I can finally get some models out for people to buy if they want them. Yeah, it's just very exciting as a, as a designer. <laughs> When it comes to the pieces like the hands, the elastic is way too big to fit through. So I'll be using S-hooks to link the internal structure to the elastic. This S-hook is just way too big though, so I'm going to have to cut it down to make sure it's able to sit in place. I modeled these cute little piece sign hands just so that I can see the quality of really tiny prints. And I am obsessed with it. It's ridiculous that you can actually see the details of the nails. Um, also, it's really strong. I'm surprised that these haven't broken. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this actually. Let's start customizing. To prep the head, I gave her two sprays of the Rust Oleum Satin Clear Spray. This will act as a primer. Once that's dry, I applied a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish to create a paper-like texture, which will allow me to paint and draw onto the face. The materials I'll be using at the moment are my watercolour pencils, and I'll be refining the lines later on with a fine tip brush and some water, just by activating the paint basically. The look I want to try for this face up is a cartoony manga anime style. Thick, sharp lines, um, geometric, a style I'm not particularly versed in, but very keen to try out and get better at, I guess. I tried not to rely on using dark colours in this face up, as I wanted to have it very light and soft. The darkest colour I'll be using is an ashy grey for a shadow colour. I definitely made some silly mistakes in this face up, ultimately meaning I had to redo it all again later on. One of those is adding the blushing right here. Normally when I do face ups, I add the blush once I've done my draft layer, and then I work on top of the blushing just sharpening those lines and making more detail. But because I want this to be a really bright and anime style, once I started adding colour into the face, my base was far too um, shaded and it was clashing with the colours that I was adding. Yeah, it just ended up looking quite bad and I didn't want to edit it out of the video because ultimately, you know, it's a part of the process. I learned not to do that. Yeah, and mistakes are fine. <laughs> Happy accidents, I guess, as Bob Ross would say.
this section of the video was actually my first day back in the studio after going to Korea and Japan. And I was away from my little baby boy for such a long time. He was demanding my full attention now that I was home. I think he might have missed me. <laughs> the is in the camera. Get out of the camera. After a short cuddle break, I'll just start sharpening those lines. For making sharp lines and shadowing and all that stuff, I mainly go in with a watercolour pencil first and then refine the lines with a damp fine tip brush. I found that watercolour pencil very much leaves a grainy like texture on resin models, which is an important thing to remember. If you're looking at customising resin heads or if you know, you're doing anime figures or Warhammer or just painting a toy, I guess, using watercolour pencils will come out grainy. Um, so it's important to go over it with water and not to be disheartened. It's not a mistake, it's just part of the process. The second mistake I made was I'm wearing gloves here and I wear it throughout the video when I'm doing this face up, but off camera, I was lazy when I was uh, fixing some lines and I just grabbed it with my hands, but I didn't realize I still had like blushing on my hands. So I was working on it and my dirty little fingers got blushing on the face and I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll just try and take it off. But resin is extremely unforgiving when it comes to mistakes. So it was not coming off and I used rubbing alcohol and I, you know, tried so much. It just looks bad. It's gonna look really bad on the video. So I just removed it and started again. All because I had dirty fingers. Gross. In the corners of the eyes, I'll add some small stars and purple pastels. I didn't realize how hard stars were to actually draw and make even. For the final face, I went over all my work with a wash of a bright pink watercolor paint to add some brightness and color back into the face because I felt it was looking a little bit too monotone brown and wasn't really blending with the face. So it just added a bit more balance. And with that, I'm going to start on the hair. To create the hair for this doll, I first have to make the wig cap. For this, I made it from craft tape. For the hair itself, I'll be doing a mixture of fibers. For the front of the head and the parting, I'll be using an acrylic yarn in a blonde and a pastel pink. And for the rest of the hair will be a synthetic braiding hair, which I straightened out. The reason I'm doing a mixed fibre is because I'm not super confident in making a full wig of synthetic hair just yet. Synthetic hair is just personally challenging for me to work with. Um, I haven't quite figured it out just yet. A lot of the styling tips and stuff is for human sized models, but it's very hard to translate that into such a tiny model. I hope I can figure it out because I just I'm obsessed with some of the things that people create with this fiber um, and I want to do it. Once all the glue was set I took the wig off and gave it a really good shake out and vigorous brush to get rid of any loose fibers. Before adding the wig back on though I did cover the face with a protective shield. I want to add styling products and really let the hair set in its style but I don't want to damage the paintwork of the face. The styling products I use are the Schwarzkopf Got To Be Glued Gel. Brushing that through with a toothbrush and letting it set for 24 hours until it's dried. While the hair sets, let's make some eyes. To create the insert eyes, I'll first be using a silicone mold template of 15 millimeters in diameter with a seven millimeter iris. 
I bought my silicone molds on eBay, but you can probably find them on Amazon. You can make it out of polymer clay, air dry clay, just roll a ball and shove a chopstick in it. And there you go, an eyeball. To create the base color, I'll be using a one-to-one -one mixture of Vallejo Rose and White. For the eyes of this doll, I wanted to try something a little different to what I usually do. Inspired by the ever-talented artist Hikari Shimoda, I wanted to create that stars in their eyes look that resonates throughout their work. To replicate that look, I grabbed some chopped white and pink tinsel. I got this particular tinsel from the nail art section at Daiso. For the first layer, I pack in some tinsel to the back of the iris and use some UV gel nail polish to cure it in place. For the pupil, I went with something very subtle, which is a half pearl, as I found that anything deeper in colour took away all attention from the shimmer and was just the main focus point. I wanted the effect that the shimmer is floating around inside the eyeball itself, not just packed into the back of the eye. To get that look, I did two additional layers of gel with tinsel that's throughout those layers. For additional detail, I painted on a large star with some white paint. And once I was happy, I sealed it all in with a final coat of UV gel nail top coat. To attach the eyes to the model, I'll be gluing them in place with some hot glue. This is such a fiddly part of the doll creation, it's so hard to hold the eye in place while trying to glue it. I know it's quite popular to use a putty or a blue tack or whatever it is to put the eyes in place. Um, not only it, it makes it less permanent, um, but makes it a bit easier to put the eyes in. I don't do this, personally. I have had eyes become unstuck in their models before. Um, it's very frustrating when that happens because you're like, why won't you just stay in place? So I'm just gonna use glue. I wasn't super sure what to make when it came to the clothes, so I kind of winged it. <laughs> when I was in Japan, I noticed that leg warmers were growing in popularity again. Not necessarily the sock ones that are synonymous with gyaru subculture, more like the bottom ends of trousers, and found that they were sold or styled in the same fabric as the shorts or skirt that they were accompanying. To replicate this style on my doll, I'll be using some scrap fabric in a pink and yellow tartan, accompanying them with a skirt of the same material. For the top of the outfit, I created an oversized sweater, which I made from the fabric of a pillowcase. I wanted the sweater, however, to be thicker and structured, so I lined it with the material of a winter sock. Don't leave anything unattended around me or I'll make clothes out of it. For some random design elements, I hand sewed some ribbon onto the jumper in a laced pattern. I did this on both arms and repeated it on the front of the jumper as well. For accessories, I sculpted some shoes and headphones in ZBrush and printed them off camera. To prime the models, I wanted to try out some new spray paints. For the shoes, I sprayed a layer of Rust Oleum Semi Gloss Protective Enamel in white and left it to dry for a day and a half. For the headphones, I tried the Rust Oleum Chalk Spray Paint in pink. I wasn't a fan of the colour of the pink once the paint dried, however. I thought it was going to be a lot brighter, but it was far more pastel. As the headphones don't need much detailing, I used a sponge and just dabbed on a more vibrant pink. Once the paint was dry, I protected it with a layer of matte varnish. Once the shoes were set, I wanted to add some detail. 
Grabbing some embroidery thread, I replicated the laces and the sole attachment. Basically just weaving with glue <laughs> with the embroidery thread and then just tightly winding the embroidery and then laying it down on the sole. All that's left at this point is to start assembling. Just in the same as I threaded the body, I thread the head as the last bead on the chain. Passing the elastic through the hole in the head and tucking them nicely in place. And once I was happy, I attached the skull cap on top. Last steps are to add the clothes and to add the wig. And with that, she is finished. Thank you so much for watching. She was such a challenge, but a welcome one. I'm so chuffed to have her and for her to actually work and not break. <laughs> it's quite jarring because obviously I've been working on this model for such a long time, specifically the body. Um, so I'm expecting something to go wrong, but nothing has and she's working. It's freaking amazing, I love it. But yeah, I would love to hear what you think in the comments below and how you would customize her if you had one of these dolls. Um, as well, name suggestions for the head model, I would love to hear it. Uh, and yeah, are you subscribed to the channel yet? Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, I would appreciate it so so much. And with that all being said, I'll see you in the next video.